Hi, welcome to TSSG, that Sunday School Girl channel where you have joined in the largest cyber community of Sunday School students. Hey, it is right here, TSSG, that Sunday School Girl channel that is being led by Evangelist Wade Nell Henson. And we want to just thank God for the vision that he has given unto Evangelist Henson and all the great leadership skills and qualities that she brings and she presents here in this space. Hey, will you join in with me and countless others to hold up the challenge and the charge that she placed before us last month as we walked into nine years of that Sunday School Sunday School Girl platform. We've been, it's been in place for nine years and she just had one simple request that we would join in with countless others and make $9 donations to the cause of this ministry to help um, develop this ministry, to help take it to greater heights, to take it further to help us to dig deeper down and pull out the riches that this platform has available according to the will and the purposes of God that has been set forth and established. Hey, we just want to thank God for that. Hey, for you, um, for you that are watching, maybe you can leave it in the comments. How many years have you been with that Sunday School Girl? How, is there anyone here that has been with the um, with the, uh, uh, with the the TSSG community for all nine? years maybe you are just fresh and brand new this is still in your first year maybe you are in your infancy wherever you are on your journey we are glad that you are here with us on this day hey and if this is your first time leave us a comment in there and so that we can show and share some love upon you and you can see the greatness that this community has to offer. Hey, this com this this Sunday School Girl channel and this community will provide um, Sunday School content and lessons and pertaining to UMI lessons. But then not only for the UMI precepts, but we are also providing information, uh, lesson details and things for the Church of God and Christ lessons. But then not only for the UMI and the Church of God and Christ, but we also provide content for the ISSL, the International National Sunday School lessons as well. And for today, me, Reverend Charles Nelson, will be presenting the lesson for the International Sunday School lesson that is going to be um, for June the 2nd of 2024 as we are walking into this ninth year um, with Evangelist Wade Nell Henson and that Sunday School Girl channel. Hey, I just got a quick question here. What is, what is, um, what is it that has your greatest, what, what is your greatest hope in? What, what is, or should I say it like this? Hmm. What has the, VM, the MVP in your life? What is your most valuable possession? Hold on, let me talk in today's terms with our young folks. Uh, who is the GOAT in your life? Who is the greatest of all time? Or even, as I just heard my nephews and them a couple weeks ago say, even the boat, the best of all times. What, what are some things that qualify something that sits so it's such a great um, and prestigious place in your life? Well, I'm glad you be able. I'm glad you have an answer for that. But here in this quarter, we are going to see how hope is something that could be set on that platform. That hope can be our most valuable possession. That hope is the best of all times. It is the greatest of all gifts that we can have. This hope. And so now we're going to look into our lesson for for this week. And but before we do. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, we are so thankful for what we are going to experience in this quarter of Sunday School Lessons from the International Sunday School Series. We ask you, Lord, to pour unto us from on high. We ask you, Lord, to speak, Lord, for we, your servants, are listening. Speak, Lord, for we, your saints, may be edified and encouraged. Speak, Lord, for someone that may have strayed away, may be drawn closer unto you. Speak, Lord, for someone that is going through times of suffering and struggling, that they may be able to find hope in you. Speak, Lord, that some sin-sick soul may hear from heaven on high, as the truth of God be revealed and uncovered, that it may send them to your throne of grace and mercy, beckoning, what must I do to be saved? And we pray, Lord, that you will speak, for we, your servants, are listening. It is in Jesus' name that we do pray and give thanks. And let all the saints of God say, Amen. Hello to every one of you. Hello, TSSG family. Hello, TSSG family. You're in the TSSG space. Well, hello, TSSG family. Sunday, 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 Sunday,
you'll see Sunday school with that Sunday school Amen. Amen. Well, let's go right on ahead and to our Sunday school lessons for this quarter. Like I said, it's going to be dealing with hope. Hope has so many different definitions and things that can be ascribed to. If you look it up at some dictionaries, you may find um, some wordings that would say things like to want something to happen or to be true. It may also include definitions that focuses on our desire. It's a desire with the expectation of, of, of attaining or um, of fulfillment. I would say for us as Christians, I would draw it just a little bit further. I would press the envelopes a little bit deeper. I would challenge us within the realms of hope and come to the point and be able to say this for my own personal explanation of hope is being able to have the blessed assurance because of the promises of God that what he has said will come to pass. When So when I have that quality of hope, it can move me into many different places. And here in this, this, this quarter, we're going to be looking at that, what that looked like in the early church, especially in those circumstances and situations that really helped build the foundation for the church. And then we want to be looking at how um, little wrong throughout this quarter and um, dealing with praise and how that fits and ties in with hope. And further along, we're going to be looking at hope and the future that it holds. But here in this first unit, we're going to be dealing with this theme of hope in the church. We're going to be looking at how hope shaped the faith of those early Christians and how it shaped the church. We're going to see here in today's lesson as we are dealing with Colossians in the first and second chapter, we're going to see how Paul um, deals with the mysteries of God and we're communicating that to the people of God and how their hope in Christ is at the center of these things. And so let us go right on in today and look at what the Word of God has to say. I'm going to read this from the NIV, also known as the New International Version, but some of the teaching may actually come out of the English Standard Version, the ESV. It is um, one of my more, more preferred translations as I am studying and sometimes preaching. And I know we still sometimes we, we like using the King James Version. We have other translations like the New Living Translations and so many variety, such a variety of different translations and paraphrases that we can use to help understand the Word of God. I had someone once ask me, he said, which translation should I read? I said, the one that you are going to read. Uh, so, I mean, it was kind of a play on it, but that is true. It's whatever one that you are going to read, that, that you will read, make that your translation to at least start off with. But anyway, let us go right on ahead into our week Sunday school lesson coming out of Colossians chapter 1. Beginning at verse 24, we'll be reading through Colossians chapter 2, ending at verse 3. This lesson titled is called Glorious Riches. Here's what the Word of God says from the NIV. It says, Now I rejoice in what I am suffering for you, and I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regards to Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, which is the church. I have become its servant by the commission God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and generations, but now, excuse me, but is now disclosed to the people, to the Lord's people. To them, God has chosen to make known to among the Gentiles, the glorious riches of this mystery, which is in Christ. I mean, excuse me, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He is the one we proclaim, admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom so that we may present everyone fully matured in Christ. To this end, I strenuously contend with all the energy Christ so powerfully works within me. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those in Laodicea and for all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they 
may be encouraged in heart and united in love so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ in whom are, excuse me, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. This, this is our reading for this week where our key text is going to be Colossians 2 uh, verses 2 and 3. Which was, which was just read, those last two verses that was read. And <laughs> we'll look here um, in, in one of our commentary books. It has some lessons, uh, um, aims, uh, that is being able to identify the mystery. Being able to also explain why Paul discusses the mystery. And state a way to pass along spiritual comfort that he or she once received during a time of distress. Hey, when we um when we look into this text, it's got a great outline that is established here, and we're just gonna walk through the through the verses of this text and try to really pull and pour into uh, what uh, pour out pull out of the text and pour into you what Paul was wanting to communicate. This Colossians was one of the of the letters that was written while Paul was incarcerated. It, it was um, a letter that 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 was sent out by um, Epirus, and he came to Paul with some exciting news about what was going on in Colossians. In the Colossians, this is a, a a city, this is a space, this is a place that Paul never had a chance to journey to along his way. This this is not a church that Paul has started. This is not a church where he has done any of his evangelistic work while he was out on his missions. But yet um, Epirus found it fitting to come bring this report unto Paul of the great things that was going on in the life of the church in Colossians. Colossians was com mainly comprised of Gentiles, and these Gentiles had accepted the word of God and had began to change their lives. They began to put their hope in the, the, the heavenly expectations of the things to come. They began to really find ways to love on one another. We, and when we look at some of the previous verses that is in pertaining to Colossians chapter 1, we can see how great the ministry is that is taking place here in Colossians. If, if I could just for a brief, brief few seconds, let's look how Paul begins to describe them in the earlier verses. He says in verse 4, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. He heard about their faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints. So they not only did they have this place where Christ set in their hearts, but they also had a displaying of love towards all saints, not just the ones that I get along with, not the ones that I like, not this click or that click, but the text says that it was for all the saints. Why? Because in verse 5, it starts off because of the the hope laid up for you in heaven. When you begin to think about the blessings and the benefits, the glorious riches that is in store for you in heaven, how does that move you to interact with others? How does that move you um, in your daily dealings with trusting and putting your hope and faith in God? Uh, notice here in this text, we see the display that when when Jesus is set on the on the uh, on, in our hearts and our Love is on display because of this hope that is laid up in heaven. This does not talk about them having big houses on the hill. This does not talk about them having a fleet of cars. This does not talk about them not having any financial issues. This does not talk about that they did not encounter different sicknesses and illness. This does not talk about the, the ed educational doors being open. But what it's really saying is that Paul has heard these things from uh, and about these Christians, these Gentiles that have now become Christian because of their faith and because of their love. 
and because of their hope that has been the foundation for the way that they move about. And this 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 good news, this this hope that has been laid up as because they have heard the word of truth. They have heard the gospel. It ain't about what they heard on Facebook. It ain't about what they heard on Twitter. It ain't about what they heard on CNN or Fox. It ain't about what they heard from the politicians. It's not about any of those things, but it was the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to them, that has guarded them, and that has moved in such a way that it led Epirus, and I hope I'm saying Epirus, um, and I had it reading to me, and now I'm and I know I'm messing it up, but this beloved servant that has brought this message to Paul. And when we look at these earlier verses, we also see that along there with Paul, um, Timothy, his protege was there. And so we want to be able to keep in mind of these of the, of the audience, of this true nature of what this scene would look like, because we see sometimes when Paul is using I statements, there are sometimes when Paul is using we statement and us statements, then there are some times where he's using you statements. And then there was even a point in this lesson where he begins to use a them statement. And so now we want to be able to go ahead and start digging into the text and be able to see how much we can really pull out of the text. We're not going to be able to get it all, but we surely can be able to pull some things out of it here in the small amount of time that I have with you. When finding um, glorious riches, we ought to respond in certain and particular ways. Look how it starts off. It says, now. I rejoice in my suffering. Hey, what he's really saying here now, because of everything that has already been said, he, he has some things that he has been talking about before. So we definitely want to read what he has to say. And Paul does a really good job at this throughout the book of Colossians, where he would take the end of one sentence and begin the argument into the next sentence. He would use what is said at before to be a pivot now as to where he's going. So now when we look at it from the ESV, he says, now I rejoice. Um, and that's, you know, um, we ought to be able to realize that now is connecting something that he has previously said to what he is now about to discuss in these, in this next, um, in these next few verses here. He, and he was talking about previously, um, listen here, he says in verse 23, if indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope, that's that word again, the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and also in which I, Paul, became a minister. And he said now he, he's taking that whole concept and he's going to now, because I rejoice in my suffering. He, he's already encouraged him to continue in the faith, to be stable, to be steadfast, to not shift. But then now he's moving to how he's able to rejoice. And when you have glorious riches, as what Paul was showing, he's, he, he gives him an opportunity to even rejoice in his suffering. The suffering that was for his sake. The suffering that he was enduring for the name of Christ. When he uses this phrase that's in this verse that what is lacking in Christ's afflictions, he is not referring to the works that was done on Calvary's cross as if it was inefficient or not enough for the task. But because of the things that had that Jesus has suffered on the cross, the early church had been under great persecution. And Paul was surely one that knows about the persecution of the church. Why? Because before when he was Saul, he was one of the main persons that we read about that was persecuting the church. But after his conversion, he has now moved to someone that is being that same voice for for the gospel's sake, for the same voice for Jesus. And he has suffered greatly at the hands of that. He had been in prison. He had been beaten. He had been shipwrecked. He had been left for dead. Paul experienced a whole plethora of things. And he realizes that in this, he is suffering what is lacking in Christ's afflictions. But notice here in the text, he has a, a reason why these things were taking place. It says, for the sake of his body. Who's, who's the his here? And this, for the sake of Christ's body. That is the church. We are the body of Christ. And there, that therefore, that does not exempt us 
from being able to go through times of suffering. Paul shows us vividly right here that even in his suffering, he knew he had something glorious because it was going about, he was enduring these things for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the church. This lets me be able to know that not all suffering is just be simply because of our sins. It was Paul that was placed in prison, not because he was stealing things, not because he was beating folks over the head, not because he lied and cheated on his taxes, not, not because he, he, he caused a, a, an insurrection, he, not because of any of those things. He had got put in prison because he was preaching the word of God, the same word of God that he is relating to them, this gospel that has been proclaimed that was able to free them. He says, look here, he says, I, I suffer for the sake of the body of, of, of Christ's body and particularly the church of which I have become a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. Hold up. Let's pause right here because when we look at this 25th verse, we see some things in particular. Paul does not take any credit upon himself. He says, if look, he ended verse 23, he says, of which Paul, which I, Paul, became a minister. But now we see him, he says, with this here, with me becoming a minister, it has, a, it has created some times of suffering. But I'm not going through this for my sake, I'm doing this for the sake of the body. But then not only that, but even realizing, but I'm doing this because of the reality is that I become a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me. Wasn't it during his conversion when, when God was speaking with Ananias and telling him to go speak to him? And Ananias said, no, no, no. I know about that guy named Saul. But what did God say back unto him? I have, I will show him how much he was suffering for, for my name's sake. And it wasn't a punishment for Saul, but it was some things that he was going to have to endure because he has chosen to be on the Lord's side. Not, what I want to do is be able to say right here is that not everyone will be our friends when we choose Jesus. Not everyone will jump in and be upon our rah-rah and hallelujah and cheer us on crowd. That there will be some times when we will have to go through being put down, being disappointed, being shut out, and being um, um, not counted in. There, there may be promotions that you will have to pass up at the job because of your relationship with Jesus the Christ. There will be some friendships that will be severed because of your relationship with Jesus Christ. And we know these things because the word of God tells us that we will have these troubles in the world, but we ought to take heart because even Jesus have overcome the world. He did not come to, to bring about these, these, um, these separations or these divisions, but when we stand on truth, the truth has its way of dividing and separating. Let us continue to move on throughout this text. He says, excuse me, according to the stewardship from God that was given to me, but then not only was it given to him, but it was given for a, um, with a reason. What is this reason? It was given for you. He said it was given to me, but it was given to me for you. What is the purpose? Why would God do all this? He says it right here in the text, to make the word of God fully known. Not to find out the quickest scheme to get rich, not to be able to find ways to uh, make sure you don't ever encounter any illnesses or sicknesses, but to make your God, the word of God, fully known. This is why Paul had become a minister, not to give these lofty messages about prosperity, but it, to proclaim the whole word of God. Why do I say the whole word of God? Because he has it here to be fully known. He is to reveal these things. And in verse 26, he goes in and he starts to talk about some of the particulars that he's referring to. He said, the mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. All of the saints of old, when we look through Hebrews chapter 11 and see how much faith the saints had, how much faith um, the um, that would, that was established when Cain and Abel, um, with that, that sacrifice that Abel gave, uh, the, the faith that was established through Abraham, the faith that was established through um, 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 Noah, the faith that was established through so many others, through Rahab, through, through Ruth, through, through all 
all of these different individuals in the Old Testament that had this quality of faith, but the mystery, the, this, this message that we now have, this message about Jesus dying on the cross for our sins was hidden. How they didn't know how God was really going to deal with these things. He had an answer, but they did not quite know. But now these things have been revealed of what now we see more than what they just was able to see in the Old Testament. This mystery hidden for ages and generations has now been revealed to his saints. Who is his? This his saints is the saints of God. Well, wait a minute. Hold on. Wait a minute, preacher. I'm so glad that you want me to pause and stop right here because I, saints, hold on. Wait a minute. I know about St. Saint, Saint Matthew. I know about St. Mark. I know about St. Luke. I know about people like uh, Mother Teresa. Which, well, 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 how can I be a saint? I'm so glad that you asked. Being a saint is simply someone that has been set aside for the purposes of God. So the moment of your conversion, the moment that you confess with your mouth and believed in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you became a saint. A saint is for any of the children of God that has been purchased and bought with the precious blood of the Lamb. For the one that have called on his mighty and magnificent name to not only just to save them from this world, but to also to be the Lord of our lives while we are still living in it. These are those who are called saints. He goes on in verse 27 to even show how God begins to move. He says to them, hold on, who is the them? He's pointing back now to the saints, to the saints. God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of his glory, of the mystery, which is which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hold on, Paul. He's he's showing here that this is a message that was just not restricted or limited to the Gentiles. I mean, if it, if it was one thing for the Jews to have this history, but yet there were still some things hidden. But all along the way, on the exception of a few that were just engrafted in, the Gentiles had not been privy to have this type of information. But now God has chosen to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, this mystery of the good news of Jesus Christ, which is in you, the hope of glory. He knows he goes into verse 28 and he says, now, when he said, well, not now, excuse me, but in verse 28, he says, him we proclaim. He's allowing them to be able to know this is what we are proclaiming. Who is the him? Jesus Christ. We are to proclaim Jesus. We are to proclaim Jesus. How do we do it? He gives us two ways how he does it. He says, warning everyone with all wisdom. And secondly, teaching everyone with all wisdom. Like, hold on, wait a minute. Now, we just should not be, I like that he tags on this. He says, we're warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom. There's a key, some key things that is there. The first of all, that the word everyone is tagged in this text twice. That this is not to be limited on who we want to be able to share the gospel with. But we are to be warning everyone of the dangers that they are in when they are not accepting the word of God. We are to be warning everyone when they are moving or straying away from the gospel and instead of just sitting by on the sideline and watching them walk down to death's doorstep. We are to be warning everyone and then not only that, but we ought to be doing it in with wisdom because we can have the right things to say and don't know how to say it the right way. We can we can speak the, the love, um, we can speak in love and um and, and neglect the truth, but we can speak in truth and neglect doing it in love. But when we do it with wisdom, both of those worlds collide and be able to live and reside together. We are able to warn everyone. But then not only that, we are to be teaching everyone. This is how he is describing that we this we, I will be reckoned to believe what he will be referred to in his we was him, Epirus, and even Timothy. But in extension, this will be for all the believers as we go out and be able to be a witness that we are to be warning and we ought to be teaching everyone with all wisdom. Here's the purpose in this statement here. He says that we may present everyone mature in Christ. The goal here is, is that we begin that we grow up. 
that we, 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 you know, there's an old phrase that when we know better, we'll do better. But if we, Christ is depending, and I don't want to say dependent as in the sense that he needs us, but he is entrusting us to proclaim by warning and teaching everyone. He's, 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 he's expecting us to use wisdom so that when we, when it's said and done, that we can present, here's the third time for this word, everyone, everyone mature in Christ. Who is this everyone? everyone that God has already predestined in this time that he will reveal and show himself to that he will reveal this and unlock this mystery to that everyone will be matured in Christ and so now we go on and I need to move move briefly and um, fast here he says in verse 29 for this I told you struggling with all his energy that he powerfully works within me. This reminds me of what he says in verse um, Ephesians chapter one. He uses a lot of the same language when you read Ephesians as he does with the Colossians. Look what he says in verse number 19. He says, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his great might. It is God that is working great things in us. So when Paul talks about with all his energy that he is powerfully working within me, he is just really referring to the same thing, that there's this immeasurable greatness that God is giving unto us to uh, to those who believe. He says, hey, for this, this is for this, everything that he has spoken of concerning this gospel, for the reason that everyone is to be presented mature unto Christ, for the reason that God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles, be because of the reasons of the great mystery, this in particular being in Jesus, he says, for this reason, I toil, I work hard, struggling, I'll, I'll go to great lengths through this, I, I'll fight through this, and he even refers this back even with Ephraim later on in Ephesians chapter, um, excuse me, in Colossians chapter 4, verse 12, he says, Ephraim, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you always, struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. And with this struggling here that is mentioned, it is not um, a struggle of weakness, but that he's willing to go to great lengths to contend for them in his prayers. He's, he, he has them at all times at the front of his prayers. Let us move on into these last few verses here. Um, when we look at if he, um, it's Colossians chapter two, he says, here he says, he begins this verse with another four statement. Here is why he's struggling. This is why he works so diligently for the sake of the gospel. This is why he works so hard to make sure that the others have an opportunity to be matured when they are being presented to God. Because for, I want you to know how great a struggle I have for you and for those at Laodicea and for all who have not seen me face to face. Look, he's, I'm, I'm going through all of this by the power of God. This is not just, this is not just for me, but it's not just for you. It's for those of your neighbors. Laodicea was not too far. Uh, so not, not just for you, but this is for your neighbors. But then not only for just you and your neighbors, but for all who have not seen me face to face. I want this to be beneficial and just co continue to produce some fruit uh, that will grow so much that it touches folks that I don't even know where it's going. It says, look, in verse number two, he says, th this purpose here it is, that their hearts may be in courage. He's, I'm going through all this so that you will be encouraged. How are we going to be encouraged? We are going to be encouraged by being knit together in love. Let me see how the NIV reads this verse here. He says, um, this is my goal, that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love. So he breaks this down here in the sense that these are the two things that wants, that must be obtained, that we are to be encouraged in love. Remember earlier I was saying about how they were able to demonstrate um, what was uh, this hope in the way that they love one another. But then not only that, but then also to be, uh, to be united in love um, and encouraged in their hearts so that, so that th th this has a result. 
Your labor will not be in vain if you are walking in this quality of fruitfulness. Here it is. It says it right here. It says so that or to reach all the riches of the fullness of the assurance and understanding and knowledge of God's mystery, which is in Christ. He keeps going back to this phrase, which is in Christ, which is in Christ. What that lets me know is that the Christ is the foundation. Christ is the su supreme authority. Christ, he keeps his focus on Christ. That when they move in these manners and his ways, that as they grow in their riches and, and, and have this, that's his, his, his phrase, full assurance, this, this full assurance of understanding, this full assurance of the knowledge of God's mystery, which is in Christ. This is what he's really breaking out with these with these individuals. And it, and it really ends um, here at this last verse. He says, in whom, talking about Christ, in whom all are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. The treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Now, if, um, and so we see here that this mystery, which is in Christ, which he has already revealed, we are in Christ. We've, we have access to what has been hidden, the treasures of wisdom, the treasure of knowledge. Back to that question, who is the MVP in your life? Who is the goat or even the boat? Christ ought to be the greatest of all times. He ought to have the MVP. Why? Because he comes with great treasures. These glorious riches that has been revealed in this. First of all, that this thing that has been a mystery from generations before has been revealed to us. That is a wonderful rich that we have. Because of these glorious riches that has been revealed, we have access. But then not only that, Earlier, we read in one of the verses where it said that God is the one that chose on whom he would reveal. To know that God has chosen each one of us to reveal the mystery to is a great treasure. God chose you according to his divine will, according to his divine purpose to reveal the hope of what is in store in the heaven. No, not only those two different things, we also have glorious riches as we continue to grow and mature in Christ. That as we know more about him, that we find riches in his understanding, the understanding of God's will and the knowledge of God's will concerning our lives. That That's good. That's good to be able to know because there are so many circumstances and situations we'll run into that we don't know whether we should go left, we should go right or go straight ahead. We just came through the pandemic and that there was so many different, Not on, I don't even want to just even just say our day-to-day -day life, but just look at the direction that the church, that we didn't know if we were supposed to gather together, if we was going to stay online, if the church was going to be closing its doors, all of these different things. But the more we grow in, the, in Christ, the more we mature in Christ, being knit together in love and being encouraged in our hearts, it brings us to a point to having some assurance of what God's, uh, um, what the uh, assurance of understanding the will of God and the assurance of the knowledge of God's will for our lives as these mysteries of the gospel continue to unfold in our lives and we can find these things in Christ Jesus. Last and not least, the greatest treasure that we, I'm only, I don't want to call it the greatest, but this what they also described that one of the glorious riches we have is these treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And so that kind of tells it right on back to what we were just previously saying. We have all these blessed opportunities. And this is what we have as believers. These are the glorious riches. And so I just pray and I hope that what we have walked through these texts and uncovered is just the beginning of what's going to help you throughout this week as you prepare to, to uh, go into Sunday school class, whether you are a teacher, an instructor, a facilitator, or even a student, may you be encouraged not only to show up in Sunday school class, but to show up in life, 
to be prepared to have a heart that is encouraged, to be prepared to show love and be united in love, to be prepared to put it all, uh, put all your eggs in a basket of hope of the glorious thing that God has set up before us. May that encourage you to put your faith in Christ Jesus because all these things that we have spoken of today is found only in him. May God, may God bless you and may God keep you. That is my humble prayer. Hit that thumbs up and like button. Leave a comment and share this with your friends. And subscribe to the channel that you may be able to keep in contact with all of the greatest things that we'll be doing. But then not only that, go into that website and see how you could become a member of this wonderful channel and all the glorious riches that this channel will provide for you as you continue on your journey being prepared to be made mature or being prepared to be presented to God as mature Christians. God bless you. Peace. Thank you so much for studying with me this week. I want to remind you of my ask, please, that you support me with the gift of $9. And if you've never done so before, tip over to my Etsy store. If you're looking for great gifts for Sunday school students or maybe a student who wants to celebrate your teacher, superintendent who wants gifts, go and check out the Etsy store. There are t-shirts, tote bags, candles, pouches, you name it, all celebrating Sunday school. So there are at least eight different designs for both Sunday school and church school. So check them out. And if you've not already done so, check out my book on Amazon. So many of you have ordered it and I've got incredible feedback and I appreciate you so much. I'm excited about this devotional, which says it's for Sunday school teachers, but honestly, it works for anyone serving in any space, ministry or even corporate spaces. So if you're looking for a devotional to encourage you along your way, check it out. Love you and see you all soon.